If you've ever tried to handle exceptions in a very specific way within Laravel, you've probably met the exception handler, uh, which lives over in exceptions just here. And this gives you the opportunity to check a specific exception and go ahead and report on it, uh, and also do the same for rendering as well. Now with reporting specifically, uh, you may wish to send an email. So in this case, we're gonna look at an example of uh, going ahead and throwing a very specific exception, which should trigger an email to be sent to maybe a developer or a team of people. So I have this exception created here. It's just a standard class that extends PHP's base exception. And we're gonna go ahead and just throw that from here. So really, really simple. So throw a new custom exception, and we'll go ahead and pull the namespace in for that. So at the moment, we just see the following, give that a refresh, our custom exception. Now, before Laravel 5.5, what we would have to do is over in the handler, just underneath here, go ahead and check this exception. This will be uh, immediately passed through into this method and we will get that custom exception in there. And that's the same for any exception we throw as well. So we can intercept it, and handle it how we want. Now, in this case, what we would have to do is say, well, check if the exception is an instance of the custom exception that we've just thrown. Well, let's go ahead and pull the namespace in, which for a start kind of, you know, starts to get a little bit messy, especially when you have lots of these in here. Well, in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and send an email. So I'm gonna email this or maybe log it with bug snag or something like that. So we can see that we get the following. Now, like I said, if you had lots of different exceptions and you wanted to handle these in slightly different ways, even with just a few checks here, things start to get a little bit messy. Now, the change in Laravel 5.5 means we can do this directly from our custom exceptions, which kind of makes sense. That is where these kind of checks should live, not in a huge long list down here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. What we're gonna do is dive into, we can clear this up as well. We're gonna dive into the base uh, exception over here, base exception handler, sorry. So let's go ahead and open this up. It's actually just here, so let's open this up just down here and we're going to go ahead and come down to report and we will see here if a method exists on this exception called report then go ahead and just call this method all that means is that over in our custom exception we can go and create a report method and we can do anything we want in here rather than having to check that instance inside of our handler and then you know get into a huge mess. So in here, we can email or log, and that's gonna work in exactly the same way. It's just nicely tidied up into its own method inside of your custom exception. You can still use your handler if you were checking maybe for a specific instance of something. Uh, you might have a uh, specific group of exceptions that went ahead and implemented a particular interface and you wanted to take an action based on that, then that's absolutely fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with placing something in here. Uh, and in this case, you maybe have some kind of alert interface. So you would have something like exception is an instance of alert interface. And maybe that just always sends an email inside of here to a specific person, maybe a developer on your team or something like that with the information about the exception. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but if you did just want to handle these individually inside of custom exceptions, we now call this report method when these are thrown.